in the studio with Janet. Join me and let's paint some beautiful holiday glass ornaments. Hi friends, Janet here, and I'm in my home studio this morning, and it's August 1st, it's hot outside, and I thought we could all use a little um, break from the heat by maybe cooling off by getting into a holiday spirit and maybe thinking about snow and decorating a Christmas tree. So what I'm going to show you today is how to take a simple glass holiday ornament ball. Um, this one was clear. Um, I have put a, a little coat, gesso coat on it, and I'll show you how to do that. You can use um, colored ones. I've done some, green, gold, it doesn't matter. If a little of the color shows through, it's going to be great. So we'll talk about that. But it's going to be something like this, just plain. And what you're going to turn it into is something lovely like this. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Look how pretty. Um, here's another one with a blue background. Isn't that lovely? So if you're a romantic at heart and you love florals and maybe shabby chic or English cottage decor, um, you're going to love this little short video because you'll be able to paint these for your own home and maybe give away as gifts. It's super easy and I'm going to show you how to do it. So come on over to the studio and um, we'll have some fun. I'll see you there. Okay, welcome back. So here we go. So I've got my glass Christmas ornament and what I've done to begin with is take some gesso and I just gessoed, just put a nice coat. Uh, this one I might have done two coats. Um, this was a gold glass Christmas ball and if you, you might not be able to see it on the camera but I can see just the faintest um, shadow of gold showing through, which is fine. Um, that's not going to be a problem at all. So I just put the gesso on there. And I like the gesso because it's got this really nice chalky um, finish to it, which I, I really like. It's very pretty. So the gesso's on there. It's all dried. And I've got my palette put together here. And I'm keeping it very simple. Uh, of course, you can use whatever colors you want. What I'm going to be using is I've got a light pink. And these are acrylics. I've got a dark pink, like a burgundy color. I've got a dark green, like a, a forest green, and I've got a chartreuse green. A little bit of orange to mix with my pinks if I want to get like a peachy coral color. Sometimes I do that. And then I've got my white, and I usually spread it out in a line like that so I can pull it off as I need it without, if I do it like this in a little blob, I, I tend to contaminate uh, the white really fast. If I dip in with a pink brush, pretty soon my white is got all pink mixed in it. But this way, if I do it in line, I can pull off what I need. So, and then right here, I don't know if you can see, it looks like water. That is extender. See it moving around? See it right there. Um, that, let me show you what brand that is. Heritage Multimedia. It's by Global Art. It's an extender medium. Um, you can only get this. I've never seen it in a store. I buy it online at uh, davidjansen.com through his website. He's a famous floral painter. It's for using with acrylics, and it is wonderful. It lets you blend your colors and uh, have them act, with acrylics anyway, have them act w like oils. Um, normally acrylics dry so fast, it's really difficult to blend and to keep the paint wet. This really keeps your acrylics wet. I mean, I've had it on my palette and come back two days later and my paints are uh, still wet. I mean, that's how long it will keep them wet if you want it to. So you use just a little bit. I mean, this has got, maybe I've used an eighth of it and I think I've had this open for, I don't know, four or five months. It doesn't take much at all. In fact, too much and you'll ruin you'll ruin your piece. It's You'll definitely know when you've used too much. It's just, it's not going to work. Just a little bit. You can either put a little drop and mix it in with your paints or you can just do like I do. I either put it in a little jar, a little bowl, or I have a little bit on my um, disposable palette and I'll just dip my the tip of my brush into it before I pick up my paint but it's really lovely stuff so you could give that a try okay so I've got my paint I've got my extender and I've gessoed my little holiday ball 
And I'm going to start by, um, I usually do like three flowers. So what I'm going to do first, and this is a filbert brush. I like to start with a filbert. I use this a lot because I like the rounded end um, of a filbert brush. It's got a nice chiseled edge, which is a flat, pointy edge, very precise, but it's rounded. So it's, it gives you a head start on uh, flowers and leaves and that kind of shape. So I'm using a filbert. Another brush I'll probably use is a liner brush for a little detail work. Um, you'll figure out what brushes you like to use. Some people like to use a little angle brush, um, a round brush. Just for this size um, ornament though, you're gonna wanna keep your brush kind of small. Uh, no longer, no larger than like a medium size brush because unless you're doing one giant flower. I'm doing smaller flowers, so I wanna use a smaller brush. So I'm just gonna dip a little bit into this medium and let's place a, my first flower like right here. So all I'm gonna do, I'm just painting in just a rough, it's a kind of like a circle, but just the, the illusion of a flower shape. Doesn't have to be a, a perfect circle. The edges can be rough. It doesn't matter. This is just gonna dry. You're not gonna see this, what you're putting on right now. It's just gonna help you blend your colors. So I don't know if you can see, but this is dull and matte, and then that gets shiny. So hopefully you can see that. Okay, so I've got that on there. Now I'm just gonna pick up, I'm gonna start with my um, lighter pink. So I'm just gonna pick up a little of that and just, just kinda, really I'm just dabbing. I'm not, it's not a precise, these are impressionistic flowers. They're not gonna look like um, the fine art masters that you see in museums, flowers that look so real, you think you could lean over and pick them. It's not that type. It's gonna be very romantic and impressionistic, very whimsical. Okay, so let's say there's the first one. And I'm not even gonna wash my brush. This is called using a dirty brush. Just leave it like that, it doesn't matter. Um, now I'm gonna go into the dark pink and this one I'm gonna have, when you put in your centers, you wanna put them, I'm gonna put this one in the middle because I'm looking straight at this rose. If I put it up here, in fact, let me just show you. Okay, if I put the bowl, the mouth of the rose, the opening up there, and then darken the bottom and just kind of blend that in. You can even use your fingers too. This medium is nice, it lets you blend with your fingers. See, now that rose has a direction, it's facing that way, you see that? If I put this opening down here, the rose would be facing that way. So you can decide what direction you want your flowers to face. This one's gonna be a center, so I'm just gonna blend that back in. Pick up a little white to lighten that, because that darkened it. Okay, now I'm gonna pick up some more dark and I'm just gonna put it in the middle. And don't try to blend it out, you can just kinda of get it in there like that. I'm just gonna wipe off my brush a little. And then remember I mentioned that I had some orange here? So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of orange, just a little, and when you mix it with the pink, you get this pretty kinda of peachy color that's really nice. Isn't that pretty? And you can go outside the edge, don't worry about it. See how my edge is a little rough? That's fine, in fact, I actually like it like that. And I'm gonna wipe off my brush. Now I'm gonna pick up some white. Now feel free to put in, if you're a color, color, colorful person and you want all kinds of crazy colors, go for it. Do whatever color you want. I love pinks, I'm a pink, pink kind of gal, so this is what I'm gonna do. But Please feel free to use whatever colors you want. The basics are always going to be the same. Put your extender down, very thin coat, pick up your lighter color, and then use your darker color to establish the center, and maybe even you can use the dark to establish a little depth. See how that just gives it a little bit of depth, a little dimension? And just go little at a time. You can always add more, it's, but it's really more difficult, especially with acrylics, to take away. Okay, so there's my first. Now I need to add some light. So I'm gonna pick up some of my white, and I'm just, the first one I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna kinda put it around the opening. And remember, these are very whimsical, so don't worry about trying to make your flowers look like they have real petals. It's not gonna happen here. 
unless you're already a wonderful artist and you can do that. See, I'm just adding a little white just to give the illusion of some little, little petals. I'm just going to take a little bit more dark and just add a little, a little more dark in there. Okay, now I'm just going to do, let's do another one right over here. And see, I, I've got a dirty brush, but that's okay. I'm going to do this as a pink rose anyway, so if I have a little pink on there, it doesn't matter. This one's going to be a little smaller, and I think I'll have it facing that direction. So I'm going to put down my lighter pink. And I'm going to pick up my darker pink. And since it's facing that way, the bottom of the rose will be over here. And that's where I want the dark. And usually where roses will come together, if you've got two, three roses, where they bunch together and meet, that is going to be darker um, because of the shadows. So that would be an appropriate place to tap in some dark. And again, you can use your fingers to blend. I can add a little bit more dark over here if I want. And then since I'm facing it that way, I'm going to put the bowl over this way, this direction. And again, let's add a little bit of the orange to give it a peach color. And some white. And I usually keep, when I add the white, I keep the movements very wispy. I don't do long strokes. I just kind of like to just flick it on a little bit. You know, just little flicks of my wrist. I don't like it looking too perfect. This looks a little too light here for me, so I'm going to add a little, a little dark. Sometimes as you're working, you kind of lose the dark that you might have put down. You can always go back and put that dark back in. Okay, so there's my second one. And I think we'll do maybe a, another one down here. So I'm going to put my medium. And again, see there's pink in this, but that's okay. If you're switching colors, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're switching colors, then maybe you want to wash your brush out. But I'm staying with pink, so I'm not going to wash it out. I'm just going to add some of the medium pink again, the lighter one. And then the darker one. And again, the base is going to be here. My rose will be facing that way. So I'll put the dark down here. I'm going to smooth it with my finger. And a little more of the orange to make it peach. Just wiping off my brush as I switch colors. And then I'm going to add my white. Okay, so there's my three roses. Very loose. I'm not worried about realism at this point. That's not what this is about. So just relax and enjoy it. Now I'm going to do some greenery. So I'm going to be working with my greens. And you don't even have to wash your brush. Lots of times when you see roses, the rose leaves will actually have sometimes a little tinge of blue or they'll have a little tinge of pinkness to them. So it's totally fine to have a little bit of pink in there. Don't worry about that. So I'm just going to pick up some green and maybe a little bit of white. Let's lighten that green just a little bit. There we go. And your leaves are just going to be very loose again. And how the easiest way for me to do them and show you is to kind of go one, two, three. So it's three right close to each other. And see how that, and just bring it to a point. That's why this nice little chiseled edge is good because it lets you bring it to a point. And then you can just do the other side. One, two, three. And see, you've got a nice little, a nice little leaf there. Let's do some more. Oh, let's go over here. One, two, three. 
one, two, three. And you can bring your brush to a chiseled edge. See how it's nice and flat? See that? That's called a chiseled edge. And you can use that tip, just the very tip, to put in a little line and have a leaf kind of coming off. Now, I could leave this one like that. You see how that looks like maybe the leaf is turned a little bit? I could leave that like that. That would be totally fine. Not a problem at all. Let's put another one here. Two, three, one, two, three. Now I can come back and pick up a little light green. This is that little chartreuse color. And I can just add a little touch of chartreuse into this if I want, just to give it a little dimension, a little something something. Isn't that pretty? And see how easy it is? The whole idea of this is to have fun, not to stress out about getting everything perfect. Um, I am not good at painting perfect roses. I absolutely adore them. I have some favorite artists that I follow on Instagram and Facebook that paint the most beautiful, lifelike roses. And um, But that's not me. I've tried. I just can't do it. And I refuse to try and try and try and get frustrated, frustrated. I'm just embracing what I can do and what I love doing. And it's painting soft, whimsical flowers. So I just go with it. And all the stress disappears. Okay, let's do some more. First, let's put some little... This would be greenery in there. So just tap in some green, just like some filler. Okay, and then we'll have another... Very easy. So you can really go around and add as much as you want, as much greenery or as little greenery. Greenery You can put this, go all the way around. Um, that's fine. Whatever you want to do. So there you go. Now one other thing you can do I've got the roses painted. I've got some leaves on. Let me get a spot that's not wet. You can add some little detail. I've got, you can use the pencil tip if you want. I've got what's called a stylus. You can get these at any craft store. They're not expensive. Um, I'm going to be using this tip on the end. You can also use the end of a little paintbrush. Um, you can use a toothpick. Anything that has a little, a little end like that, a little point. A chopstick. They would all be fine. And what I'm going to do is dip it in white, and I'm just going in with some little whimsical little, I guess these are stamens. And it just adds that little something something. So there you go. A beautiful, romantic, shabby, chic holiday ornament for your tree. These are great to give as gifts because these ornaments are so inexpensive. You can get them online. You can get them at your local craft shops. You can get them at, um, I mean, just all kinds of places. Uh, big box stores, the home decor stores, home improvement stores. Come the holiday time, they're all going to be stocking them. And you can pick them up pretty inexpensive. They make great gifts. You can customize the flowers to uh, your friend's favorite colors or their home decor. If you have, a lot of people have a shabby chic or a white Christmas trees are very in, the tabletop trees. And this is not the only size. You can get these in all different sizes, big sizes, little miniature holiday ornaments. You can do this on whatever size. The bigger the rose, the floral, the bigger the brush. Just use a bigger brush. The smaller, just use a smaller brush. But take your time, have fun, don't worry about perfection, that's not what these are about, and just enjoy the process. I wanted to show you a couple of options that you have. Here is one that I painted, and this one I've actually applied a matte water-based varnish. I kept it matte because I really like the flat, chalky look. I didn't really want it shiny. Um, tied a little bow, and I think it's just lovely. That would make a beautiful gift. And here's another one. 
those of you that know me know I love my German glass glitter. Not the plastic kind, but the the, uh, the gla real glass glitter. It's just wonderful stuff. This one I have added, uh, I did varnish it with a water-based varnish in a matte finish, so it's not real shiny. And while the varnish was wet, I put German glass glitter on the flowers and look how pretty. Isn't that pretty? So that's another option if you like to really get it glitzy. So ribbons, bows, you can tie vintage lace or linen strips on the top. Um, you can really go crazy and, and make it really fun. So I wanted to show you those couple of options too. Now you can use a, make sure everything is really dry before you varnish. Um, I use a brush on varnish. I prefer the matte, but you can use glossy. It doesn't matter. Let's talk about the products we used for this workshop. I used acrylic paint, water-based acrylic paint, easy to wash out of your brushes, a little soap and water will do the trick, not a problem. I like tube acrylics. Um, I get them at a local art shop. You can buy them online. The, the better brands, Golden, Amsterdam, Liquitex, they have a higher pigment ratio, and the colors are just really nice and vibrant, and I just really prefer them. If you happen to have this type of craft paint at home already, don't worry, this will be fine. You can use this. Um, you'll still get great results. These are my preferred, but these will work, so no need to go out and spend more money. So those are the paints. Uh, varnishes, you got some options. A lot of different companies, DecoArt, Delta. If you go into any Joann's store or Michael's, um, Walmart, any place like that, and go into the art section and you will see different varnishes like this. A lot of different brand names. What you're gonna look for is, this is gloss. You want uh, water-based, so this is a water-based gloss varnish. That's for if you want something shiny. Uh, this is a matte varnish. That is if you want something to remain dull and kind of chalky looking. That's what I preferred for my ornaments. Um, I don't like them to be really shiny. If I want shine, I'm going to add some glitter. So you've got gloss, you've got matte. Uh, this one is a different brand. This is Delta, but it's satin. Satin is like, I'm sure you guys have painted walls. It's the same thing, like an eggshell or a satin finish. Not really shiny, but not really dull. So it's kind of a middle of the road. All of them water-based, all of them dry fast, pretty much odorless, soap and water cleanup, really easy to use, not expensive. So you'll need to decide what kind of varnish you want and pick up one of those. The extender medium I use is Heritage Multimedia by Global Art Extender Medium. Um, this goes a long way. I bought it online. Um, you can just Google uh, the name and you'll be able to find out where to buy it. It's not that expensive. I'm trying to remember what I paid for it. Um, gosh, I can't remember. Maybe around $10, maybe less. But it lasts a long time. I mean, I've used maybe one eighth of this and I think I've had it for months and months. You just use a tiny bit when you're painting. It goes and lasts a long time. So it's, it's really very cost effective um, in the long run and it's great stuff, I love it. There are other brands of extenders, so if you happen to have another type of uh, acrylic extender for acrylic painting, that's perfectly fine. Go ahead and use it. Okay, so that's the extender I use. The gesso, when I talked about gessoing as a base, this was a um, clear glass ornament. I added two coats of gesso, and gesso is just, it's like a white paint, but it's kind of runny. Um, mine is, the, the type I bought here is, is kind of loose. What I do is I just spritz some either on a disposable palette or in a little um, cup, and I can use it just as its white base, or I'll mix a little bit of paint into it. And that's what I did here. I mixed a little bit of gold and then little touches of turquoise. Um, it dries matte and kind of chalky, and it makes a nice base on which to paint the roses. Gesso is the stuff that artists use 
to, they apply it to a canvas before they paint. They coat the canvas and it gives the paint a nice tooth to grab onto. It can help smooth out the canvas. So that's what that's used for. So you can get it in different sizes. This is a larger size, but you can buy just a small size uh, and that will be fine. So that's what I used for the base. Um, the glitter, I use German glass glitter. And if you go to, get on the internet and go to Myers Imports, uh, they sell authentic imported German glass glitter. It's lovely, lovely stuff. It comes in colors too. You can also go to some craft stores and look for diamond dust. That's also a clear glass glitter. This is not, as I said in the video, not a plastic glitter. It doesn't have that staticky um, texture going on that sticks to everything. It's real glass. So this this part is not really a children's project. Painting the, app, the uh, ornaments is absolutely a child's project. They would have a lot of fun with this, um, especially since they're not gonna be realistic roses. So that would be fun, but not the German glass glitter. And all I do is just brush on a little bit of like Elmer's glue, any kind of a glue that will dry clear uh, or even a little bit more varnish, clear varnish. Brush it on and while it's wet, you just tap your glitter on it, tap it off and just let it dry. It's really easy. And then that's on there for good and it's just beautiful. Um, the brushes, as I said before, I like using a filbert brush. This was, uh, I used a number six. You can get these really any craft shop. You can get them online. Um, Artist Club, that's where I like to get mine. I was trying to remember the name. Artistclub.com has very inexpensive, really nice brushes. Uh, for instance, this is the brand name, Papillon. They make really nice brushes. They're inexpensive. Take care of them and they'll last a long time. A lot of my Papillon brushes I've had for years and years because I wash them out each time, take care of them, and they'll just last a long time. So it's good to have a filbert brush. Um, it's good to have maybe a liner brush, a small liner brush for like little vine detail work or for stems. When I did the little stamens, I showed you the stylus that I had, and that's really just like a, a stick with little metal points on it. Um, it's great to have. If you don't have it, don't worry. Use the tip of your paintbrush. Use a toothpick, a uh, tip of a pencil. Um, anything like that will work. So I think that's all the supplies. So hopefully you'll go out and pick up some supplies. Sit down and maybe with a friend or by yourself, start painting some pretty ornaments and keep them for your home for the holidays or give them to friends. Thanks so much for joining me. And if you enjoyed this fun project, I do hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button. Please feel free to share this video with your friends and come back often because I will be adding more fun tutorials and art tips and tricks. So hopefully I'll see you back here in the studio. Please also come visit me. I am part of the Zenzo Creative Artist Group, offering all kinds of fun workshops for all skill levels. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and I will see you in the studio.